Tides in the ocean are generated primarily by a combination of the gravitational pull of the moon and the centrifugal force due to the earth and the moon rotating about a common axis. The sun also has an effect, but its gravitational pull is less, as it's much further away than the moon. Spring tides occur close to full and new moon when the sun and the moon are in alignment. The tides have been used for generations for generating power. In ancient tide mills, water was trapped in an estuary or storage pond on the incoming tide and its potential energy harnessed by a water wheel on its release. The same idea is used today in barrage systems and tidal lagoons except that the water wheels have been replaced by modern turbines. There are no tide mills left in operation in Scotland, but there are two in England and I'm going to visit these. I'm at Woodbridge Tide Mill on the river Deben in the south of England. In a minute I'm going to try and find Bob Spillett, who's an expert on the mill. Our water wheel is the undershop type. It's four tons of English oak and it's the, the oldest technology that's been here ever since the first mills were built. Looking out of the window now, the tide seems very low, Bob. Is it going to be possible to actually now start the mill running? Yes, the tides are right now. We can start it immediately. I'm going on to visit the other working tide mill, which is at Ealing, near to Southampton. There's been a tide mill here at Ealing for about 900 years now. That's a long time that we've been harnessing the power of the tide here in Ealing. Our current building is over 250 years old. This is the bin loft. This is where the grain would have been stored and it would be transferred to the floor below, the stone floor where the millstones are, using chutes. Now the tide is just on the turn and I know that Matt, our miller, is upstairs just checking the equipment and we're going to start milling very soon. Now that the tide has dropped off, I've opened up our sluice gate and it's releasing a jet of water and it's hitting our paddle blades on the water wheel and it's spinning all of our machinery. Behind me here is Morecambe Bay. This is a possible site for a tidal lagoon or barrage system. There are many proposed sites around the British Isles, the best known of these being in the Severn Estuary. In contrast to the barrage and lagoon systems, tidal stream turbines capture the kinetic energy of the flow generated by the tides in the same way as wind turbines harness the energy from the wind. Compared to a wind turbine of the same size, a tidal stream turbine will generate over 800 times as much power for the same flow speed. Tidal stream velocities around much of Scotland's coastline are very high, notably in the Pentland Firth, but also, for example, in straits such as Kyle Ray. I'm at the Kyle Ray Straits between the mainland of Scotland where I'm sitting and the Isle of Skye to my left here. See how the ferry has to manoeuvre these very, very strong currents in order to end up at the right place on the other side. The strait is being considered as a possible site for the installation of tidal turbines for power generation. All round Britain, the waters which have potential for tidal power generation. I've come to the Isle of Man to meet up with Steve Malley, who's passionate about tidal power. 
I'm here in the Isle of Man uh, in the north at the point of air and behind me in this area here is the area that uh, we've chosen to undertake a tidal stream project. The water depths range from 30 to 60 metres and the water speeds are in excess of 3 metres uh, per second and we hope there could be hot spots with over 4 metres per second. We've looked at several different types of turbines, all of which sit on the bottom of the seabed, either piled in or with gravity bases, and, and we feel the tidal strength here would produce substantial amounts of tidal energy for export from the Isle of Man to the UK. Most of the turbines have uh, turbine heights of about 15 to 20 metres, so with the depth of the water here off the point of air, all of the turbines would be submerged and there would be no visible impact on the environment from the shore. The first commercial tidal stream turbine to feed energy into the grid was installed in 2008 in Strangford Lock. I'm on the shores of Strangford Lock in Northern Ireland. Behind me is the CGEN tidal energy generator. At the moment it's generating power so the blades are below the water level. The tidal currents here, as you can probably see, are extremely strong. The blades can actually be raised up for maintenance purposes and then you could actually see them out of the water, but you can't at the moment. There are numerous tidal stream systems currently under development in Scotland. My first visit will be to the one at Blue Mel Sound. I've come to the Blue Mel Sound on a rather windy day and I've met up with Colin Dickey from the North Yale Development Council. Colin, could you tell us something about the council? Yes, the North Yale Development Council was set up shortly after World War II to support and create employment for the local community. Colin, how did the council become interested in tidal power? Well, it was about five years ago that we were approached by Community Energy Scotland and they asked if we'd be interested in becoming involved in a tidal power project. Have any turbines actually been installed yet? Yes, we've actually just installed a tight turbine behind us here, um, which is a 30 kilowatt machine. The turbines being installed in Blue Mull Sound are produced by Nova Innovation. They are two bladed machines which sit on the bed of the sea. Early versions were rated at 30 kilowatts and later versions at 100 kilowatts. I'm in Lerwick and I've come to Shetland Composites to meet Fred Gibson. Fred, could you just explain briefly what you're doing here? Yeah, what we do here at Shetland Composites, we actually manufacture turbine blades for tidal devices. Um, we've been doing this for quite a number of years, but up until now, we've just been doing the small prototypes. But now, finally, these prototypes are now scaling up onto full-size blades. Um, these blade, particular blades here are for Nova Innovation, which is an Edinburgh-based company, and they've already got a, um, one of their machines, devices, up in Blue Mel Sound in Shetland, which is hopefully making electricity as we're speaking. A similar but even more ambitious project is under development in the Pentland Firth, in the waters between the mainland of Scotland and the island of Stroma. In the first stage of this, Maygen Limited are installing four Atlantis resources and Andritz Hydro Hammerfest turbines on the bed of the sea. The horizontal axis turbines being developed by Sustainable Marine Energy are located at mid-depth rather than on the bed. Here the water velocities are higher than at the bed. Their rotors have three blades rather than two. 
So my name is Jason Heyman. I'm the Managing Director of Sustainable Marine Energy. Uh, Sustainable Marine Energy is a company that's developing um, platforms um, that enable the low cost and easy deployment of tidal energy um, and also sort of all the enabling bits of technology um, like mooring lines, anchors and umbilicals that are hopefully going to see tidal energy become a real industry. So this is Plato, uh, SME's prototype tidal energy system. So the advantages of this type of system is that it's moored, uh, it sits midway up the water column and it can be towed out to site and then easily brought to the surface for maintenance and if required bring it back and forth at very low cost. On the turbines developed by Scott Renewables the two bladed rotors are suspended below a floating hull to take advantage of the high velocities near the surface. I've come to Harland and Wolfe in Belfast to look for myself at the final stages of construction of the Scott Renewables new tidal power turbine. When this is finished in about two months time this will be producing two megawatts of power and will be the most powerful tidal turbine in the world. This yellow painted structure is the floating hull for the Scott Renewables machine. The two horizontal axis rotors are mounted beneath the hull and can be folded underneath it for installation and servicing. I've come to look at the actual blades now and I've met up with Finlay Wallace. Finlay, could you just explain the main features of um, the blade that we use on the turbine. Okay, um, this uh, twin bladed rotor is 16 meters in diameter and is designed for a power output of one megawatt and we've got two rotors on the device to make up the, the two megawatt capacity and uh, the blades are constructed from fiberglass and epoxy uh, and it's technology based on what's used in the wind industry. The Scott Renewables SR2000 was launched at Harland and Wolf in May 2016. The Scott Renewables SR2000 has now come to Orkney and is moored at Hatchton Quay just outside Kirkwell. Shortly it'll be going out to the test site at EMEC. At the test site much attention is being paid to the environmental impact of the turbines. My name is Michael Butler, I'm the Acoustic Engineer at the European Marine Energy Centre in Orkney. At EMEC we are interested in the environmental impact of marine energy converters and one of the ways that we do this is to measure noise using uh, equipment such as this um, and hydrophones um, which are basically types of microphone that go underwater. At EMEC we have sites for testing both wave and tidal marine energy converters. At both sites we use um, drogues uh, to allow the hydrophone to drift with the current as it travels down or across the site. As well as having some of the world's best tidal power resources, Scotland is home to many of the most innovative engineers working in the field of marine renewables.